Genetically Modified Food, Wikipedia Audio Genetically Modified Foods or GM Foods, also known as Genetically Engineered Foods or Bioengineered Foods, are foods produced from organisms that have had changes introduced into their DNA using the methods of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering techniques allow for the introduction of new traits as well as greater control over traits than previous methods such as selective breeding and mutation breeding. Commercial sale of genetically modified foods began in 1994, when Colgene first marketed its unsuccessful Flavor SAVR delayed ripening tomato. Most food modifications have primarily focused on cash crops in high demand by farmers such as soybean, corn, canola, and cotton. Genetically modified crops have been engineered for resistance to pathogens and herbicides and for better nutrient profiles. GM livestock have been developed, although as of November 2013 none were on the market. There is a scientific consensus that currently available food derived from GM crops poses no greater risk to human health than conventional food, but that each GM food needs to be tested on a case-by-case -case basis before introduction. Nonetheless, members of the public are much less likely than scientists to perceive GM foods as safe. The legal and regulatory status of GM foods varies by country with some nations banning or restricting them, and others permitting them with widely differing degrees of regulation. Definition However, there are ongoing public concerns related to food safety, regulation, labeling, environmental impact, research methods, and the fact that some GM seeds, along with all new plant varieties, are subject to plant breeders' rights owned by corporations. Genetically modified foods, GM foods, or genetically engineered foods, are foods produced from organisms that have had changes introduced into their DNA using the methods of genetic engineering as opposed to traditional cross-breeding. In the U.S., the Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration favor the use of genetic engineering over genetic modification as the more precise term. The USDA defines genetic modification to include genetic engineering or other more traditional methods. Maltodextrin, a lightly hydrolyzed starch product used as a bland tasting filler and thickener, various glucose syrups, also called corn syrups in the U.S., viscous solutions used as sweeteners and thickeners in many kinds of processed foods, dextrose, commercial glucose, prepared by the complete hydrolysis of starch, high fructose syrup, made by treating dextrose solutions with the enzyme glucose isomerase, until a substantial fraction of the glucose has been converted to fructose, sugar. Alcohols, such as maltitol, erythritol, sorbitol, mannitol, and hydrogenated starch hydrolysate, are sweeteners made by reducing sugars. According to the World Health Organization, genetically modified organisms can be defined as organisms in which the genetic material has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally by mating and slash or natural recombination. The technology is often called modern biotechnology or gene technology, sometimes also recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering. Foods produced from or using GM organisms are often referred to as GM foods. Human-directed genetic manipulation of food began with the domestication of plants and animals through artificial selection at about 10,500 to 10,100 BC, when the process of selective breeding, in which organisms with desired traits are used to breed the next generation and organisms lacking the trait are not bred, is a precursor to the modern concept of genetic modification. One 
one with the discovery of DNA in the early 1900s and various advancements in genetic techniques through the 1970s it became possible to directly alter the DNA and genes within food. The first genetically modified plant was produced in 1983, using an antibiotic-resistant tobacco plant. Genetically modified microbial enzymes were the first application of genetically modified organisms in food production and were approved in 1988 by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. In the early 1990s, recombinant chymosin was approved for use in several countries. Cheese had typically been made using the enzyme complex rennet that had been extracted from cow's stomach lining. Scientists modified bacteria to produce chymosin, which was also able to clot milk, resulting in cheese curds. The first genetically modified food approved for release was the Flavra SAVR tomato in 1994. Developed by Colgene, it was engineered to have a longer shelf life by inserting an antisense gene that delayed ripening. China was the first country to commercialize a transgenic crop in 1993 with the introduction of virus resistant tobacco. In 1995, Bacillus thuringiensis potato was approved for cultivation, making it the first pesticide-producing crop to be approved in the U.S. Other genetically modified crops receiving marketing approval in 1995 were, canola with modified oil composition, Bt maize, cotton resistant to the herbicide bromoxenol, Bt cotton, glyphosate-tolerant soybeans, virus-resistant squash, and another delayed ripening tomato. With the creation of golden rice in 2000, scientists had genetically modified food to increase its nutrient value for the first time. By 2010, 29 countries had planted commercialized biotech crops and a further 31 countries had granted regulatory approval for transgenic crops to be imported. The U.S. was the leading country in the production of GM foods in 2011, with 25 GM crops having received regulatory approval. In 2015, 92% of corn, 94% of soybeans, and 94% of cotton produced in the U.S. were genetically modified strains. The first genetically modified animal to be approved for food use was Aquadvantage salmon in 2015. The salmon were transformed with a growth hormone regulating gene from a Pacific Chinook salmon and a promoter from an ocean pout enabling it to grow year-round instead of only during spring and summer. History In April 2016, a white button mushroom modified using the CRISPR technique received de facto approval in the United States, after the USDA said it would not have to go through the agency's regulatory process. The agency considers the mushroom exempt because the editing process did not involve the introduction of foreign DNA. The most widely planted GMOs are designed to tolerate herbicides. By 2006 some weed populations had evolved to tolerate some of the same herbicides. Palmer amaranth is a weed that competes with cotton. A native of the southwestern U.S., it traveled east and was first found resistant to glyphosate in 2006, less than 10 years after GM cotton was introduced. Genetically engineered organisms are generated and tested in the laboratory for desired qualities. The most common modification is to add one or more genes to an organism's genome. Less commonly, genes are removed or their expression is increased or silenced or the number of copies of a gene is increased or decreased. Once satisfactory strains are produced, the producer applies for regulatory approval to field test them, called a field release. 
Field testing involves cultivating the plants on farm fields or growing animals in a controlled environment. If these field tests are successful, the producer applies for regulatory approval to grow and market the crop. Once approved, specimens are cultivated and sold to farmers. The farmers cultivate and market the new strain. In some cases, the approval covers marketing but not cultivation. According to the USDA, the number of field releases for genetically engineered organisms has grown from 4 in 1985 to an average of about 800 per year. Cumulatively, more than 17,000 releases had been approved through September 2013. Papaya was genetically modified to resist the ring spot virus. Sunup is a transgenic red fleshed sunset papaya cultivar that is homozygous for the coat protein gene PRSV. Rainbow is a yellow fleshed F1 hybrid developed by crossing Sunup and non transgenic yellow fleshed Kapoho. The New York Times stated, in the early 1990s, Hawaii's papaya industry was facing disaster because of the deadly papaya ring spot virus. Its single-handed savior was a breed engineered to be resistant to the virus. Without it, the state's papaya industry would have collapsed. Today, 80% of Hawaiian papaya is genetically engineered, and there is still no conventional or organic method to control ring spot virus. The GM cultivar was approved in 1998. In China, a transgenic PRSV-resistant papaya was developed by South China Agricultural University and was first approved for commercial planting in 2006. As of 2012 95% of the papaya grown in Guangdong province and 40% of the papaya grown in Hainan province was genetically modified. The new leaf potato, a GM food developed using naturally occurring bacteria found in the soil known as Bacillus thuringiensis, was made to provide in-plant protection from the yield-robbing Colorado potato beetle. The new leaf potato, brought to market by Monsanto in the late 1990s, was developed for the fast food market. It was withdrawn in 2001 after retailers rejected it and food processors ran into export problems. Process Crops As of 2005, about 13% of the zucchini grown in the U.S. was genetically modified to resist three viruses, that strain is also grown in Canada. Fruits and Vegetables Corn Soy Wheat Derivative Products In 2011, BASF requested the European Food Safety Authority's approval for cultivation and marketing of its Fortuna potato as feed and food. The potato was made resistant to late blight by adding resistant genes BLB1 and BLB2 that originate from the Mexican wild potato Solanum bulbocastinum. In February 2013, BASF withdrew its application. In 2013, the USDA approved the import of a GM pineapple that is pink in color and that overexpresses a gene derived from tangerines and suppress other genes, increasing production of lycopene. The plant's flowering cycle was changed to provide for more uniform growth and quality. The fruit does not have the ability to propagate and persist in the environment once they have been harvested according to USDA APHIS. According to Del Monte's submission, the pineapples are commercially grown in a monoculture that prevents seed production, as the plant's flowers aren't exposed to compatible pollen sources. Importation into Hawaii is banned for plant sanitation reasons. In 2014, the USDA approved a genetically modified potato developed by J.R. 
Simplot company that contained 10 genetic modifications that prevent bruising and produce less acrylamide when fried. The modifications eliminate specific proteins from the potatoes, via RNA interference, rather than introducing novel proteins. Corn starch and starch sugars, including syrups. In February 2015 Arctic apples were approved by the USDA, becoming the first genetically modified apple approved for sale in the U.S. Gene silencing is used to reduce the expression of polyphenol oxidase, thus preventing the fruit from browning. Corn used for food and ethanol has been genetically modified to tolerate various herbicides and to express a protein from Bacillus thuringiensis that kills certain insects. About 90% of the corn grown in the U.S. was genetically modified in 2010. In the U.S. in 2015, 81% of corn acreage contained the Bt trait and 89% of corn acreage contained the glyphosate tolerant trait. Corn can be processed into grits, meal, and flour as an ingredient in pancakes, muffins, donuts, breadings and batters, as well as baby foods, meat products, cereals, and some fermented products. Corn-based masa flour and masa dough are used in the production of taco shells, corn chips and tortillas. Genetically modified soybean has been modified to tolerate herbicides and produce healthier oils. In 2015, 94% of soybean acreage in the U.S. was genetically modified to be glyphosate tolerant. As of December 2017, genetically modified wheat has been evaluated in field trials, but has not been released commercially. Starch or amylum is a polysaccharide produced by all green plants as an energy store. Pure starch is a white, tasteless, and odorless powder. It consists of two types of molecules the linear and helical amylose and the branched amylopectin. Depending on the plant, starch generally contains 20-25% to amylose and 75-80% to amylopectin by weight. Starch can be further modified to create modified starch for specific purposes, including creation of many of the sugars in processed foods. They include Lecithin is a naturally occurring lipid. It can be found in egg yolks and oil-producing plants. It is an emulsifier and thus is used in many foods. Corn, soy, and safflower oil are sources of lecithin, though the majority of lecithin commercially available is derived from soy. Sufficiently processed lecithin is often undetectable with standard testing practices. According to the FDA, no evidence shows or suggests hazard to the public when lecithin is used at common levels. Lecithin added to foods amounts to only 2 to 10% of the 1 to 5 grams of phosphoglycerides consumed daily on average. Nonetheless, consumer concerns about GM food extend to such products. This concern led to policy and regulatory changes in Europe in 2000, when Regulation 50-2000 was passed which required labeling of food containing additives derived from GMOs, including lecithin. Because of the difficulty of detecting the origin of derivatives like lecithin with current testing practices, European regulations require those who wish to sell lecithin in Europe to employ a comprehensive system of identity preservation. Lecithin The U.S. imports 10% of its sugar, while the remaining 90% is extracted from sugar beet and sugarcane. After deregulation in 2005, Glyphosate-resistant sugar beet was extensively adopted in the United States. 95% of beet acres in the U.S. were planted with glyphosate-resistant seed in 2011. 
GM sugar beets are approved for cultivation in the U.S., Canada and Japan, the vast majority are grown in the U.S. GM beets are approved for import and consumption in Australia, Canada, Colombia, EU, Japan, Korea, Mexico, New Zealand, Philippines, the Russian Federation and Singapore. Pulp from the refining process is used as animal feed. The sugar produced from GM sugar beets contains no DNA or protein it is just sucrose that is chemically indistinguishable from sugar produced from non-GM sugar beets. Independent analyses conducted by internationally recognized laboratories found that sugar from Roundup Ready sugar beets is identical to the sugar from comparably grown conventional sugar beets. Most vegetable oil used in the U.S. is produced from GM crops canola, corn, cotton, and soybeans. Vegetable oil is sold directly to consumers as cooking oil shortening and margarine and is used in prepared foods. There is a vanishingly small amount of protein or DNA from the original crop in vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is made of triglycerides extracted from plants or seeds and then refined and may be further processed via hydrogenation to turn liquid oils into solids. The refining process removes all, or nearly all non-triglyceride ingredients. Medium-chain triglycerides offer an alternative to conventional fats and oils. The length of a fatty acid influences its fat absorption during the digestive process. Fatty acids in the middle position on the glycerol molecules appear to be absorbed more easily and influence metabolism more than fatty acids on the end positions. Unlike ordinary fats, MCTs are metabolized like carbohydrates. They have exceptional oxidative stability, and prevent foods from turning rancid readily. Sugar Livestock and poultry are raised on animal feed, much of which is composed of the leftovers from processing crops, including GM crops. For example, Approximately 43% of a canola seed is oil. What remains after oil extraction is a meal that becomes an ingredient in animal feed and contains canola protein. Likewise, the bulk of the soybean crop is grown for oil and meal. The high-protein defatted and toasted soy meal becomes livestock feed and dog food. 98% of the U.S. soybean crop goes for livestock feed. In 2011, 49% of the U.S. maize harvest was used for livestock feed. Despite methods that are becoming more and more sensitive, tests have not yet been able to establish a difference in the meat, milk, or eggs of animals depending on the type of feed they are fed. It is impossible to tell if an animal was fed GM soy just by looking at the resulting meat, dairy, or egg products. The only way to verify the presence of GMOs in animal feed is to analyze the origin of the feed itself. A 2012 literature review of studies evaluating the effect of GM feed on the health of animals did not find evidence that animals were adversely affected although small biological differences were occasionally found. The studies included in the review ranged from 90 days to 2 years, with several of the longer studies considering reproductive and intergenerational effects. Vegetable Oil Other Uses Animal Feed Enzymes produced by genetically modified microorganisms are also integrated into animal feed to enhance availability of nutrients and overall digestion. These enzymes may also provide benefit to the gut microbiome of an animal, as well as hydrolyze anti-nutritional factors present in the feed. Rennet is a mixture of enzymes used to coagulate milk into cheese. Originally it was available only from the fourth stomach of calves, and was scarce and expensive, or was available from microbial sources, 
which often produced unpleasant tastes. Genetic engineering made it possible to extract rennet-producing genes from animal stomachs and insert them into bacteria, fungi, or yeasts to make them produce chymosin, the key enzyme. The modified microorganism is killed after fermentation. Chymosin is isolated from the fermentation broth, so that the fermentation-produced chymosin used by cheese producers has an amino acid sequence that is identical to bovine rennet. The majority of the applied chymosin is retained in the whey. Trace quantities of chymosin may remain in cheese. FPC was the first artificially produced enzyme to be approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. FPC products have been on the market since 1990 and as of 2015 had yet to be surpassed in commercial markets. In 1999, about 60% of U.S. hard cheese was made with FPC. Its global market share approached 80%. By 2008, approximately 80% to 90% of commercially made cheeses in the U.S. and Britain were made using FPC. In some countries, recombinant bovine somatotropin is approved for administration to increase milk production. RBST may be present in milk from RBST-treated cows but it is destroyed in the digestive system and even if directly injected into the human bloodstream, has no observable effect on humans. The FDA, World Health Organization, American Medical Association, American Dietetic Association and the National Institutes of Health have independently stated that dairy products and meat from RBST-treated cows are safe for human consumption. However. On September 30, 2010, the United States Court of Appeals, Sixth Circuit, analyzing submitted evidence, found a compositional difference between milk from RBGH-treated cows and milk from untreated cows. The court stated that milk from RBGH-treated cows has increased levels of the hormone insulin-like growth factor 1 higher fat content and lower protein content when produced at certain points in the cow's lactation cycle, and more somatic cell counts, which may make the milk turn sour more quickly. Genetically modified livestock are organisms from the group of cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, birds, horses, and fish kept for human consumption whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. In some cases, the aim is to introduce a new trait to the animals which does not occur naturally in the species, i.e. transgenesis. A 2003 review published on behalf of Food Standards Australia New Zealand examined transgenic experimentation on terrestrial livestock species as well as aquatic species such as fish and shellfish. The review examined the molecular techniques used for experimentation as well as techniques for tracing the transgenes in animals and products as well as issues regarding transgene stability. Some mammals typically used for food production have been modified to produce non-food products, a practice sometimes called farming. AGM salmon, awaiting regulatory approval since 1997, was approved for human consumption by the American FDA in November 2015, to be raised in specific land-based hatcheries in Canada and Panama. There is a scientific consensus that currently available food derived from GM crops poses no greater risk to human health than conventional food, but that each GM food needs to be tested on a case-by-case -case basis before introduction. Nonetheless, members of the public are much less likely than scientists to perceive GM foods as safe. The legal and regulatory status of GM foods varies by country with some nations banning or restricting them, and others permitting them with widely differing degrees of regulation.
Opponents claim that long-term health risks have not been adequately assessed and propose various combinations of additional testing, labeling or removal from the market. The advocacy group European Network of Scientists for Social and Environmental Responsibility disputes the claim that science supports the safety of current GM foods, proposing that each GM food must be judged on case-by-case -case basis. The Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment called for removing GM foods from the market pending long-term health studies. Multiple disputed studies have claimed health effects relating to GM foods or to the pesticides used with them. The legal and regulatory status of GM foods varies by country, with some nations banning or restricting them, and others permitting them with widely differing degrees of regulation. Countries such as the United States, Canada, Lebanon, and Egypt use substantial equivalents to determine if further testing is required, while many countries such as those in the European Union, Brazil, and China only authorize GMO cultivation on a case-by-case -case basis. In the U.S. the FDA determined that GMOs are generally recognized as safe and therefore do not require additional testing if the GMO product is substantially equivalent to the non-modified product. If new substances are found, further testing may be required to satisfy concerns over potential toxicity, allergenicity, possible gene transfer to humans or genetic outcrossing to other organisms. Government regulation of GMO development and release varies widely between countries. Marked differences separate GMO regulation in the US and GMO regulation in the European Union. Regulation also varies depending on the intended product's use. For example, a crop not intended for food use is generally not reviewed by authorities responsible for food safety. In the U.S., three government organizations regulate GMOs. The FDA checks the chemical composition of organisms for potential allergens. The United States Department of Agriculture supervises field testing and monitors the distribution of GM seeds. The United States Environmental Protection Agency is responsible for monitoring pesticide usage including plants modified to contain proteins toxic to insects. Like USDA, EPA also oversees field testing and the distribution of crops that have had contact with pesticides to ensure environmental safety. In 2015 the Obama administration announced that it would update the way the government regulated GM crops. In 1992 FDA published Statement of Policy, Foods Derived from New Plant Varieties. This statement is a clarification of FDA's interpretation of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act with respect to foods produced from new plant varieties developed using recombinant deoxyribonucleic acid technology. FDA encouraged developers to consult with the FDA regarding any bioengineered foods in development. The FDA says developers routinely do reach out for consultations. In 1996 FDA updated consultation procedures. As of 2015, 64 countries require labeling of GMO products in the marketplace. U.S. and Canadian national policy is to require a label only given significant composition differences or documented health impacts, although some individual U.S. states enacted laws requiring them. In July 2016, Public Law 114-214 was enacted to regulate labeling of GMO food on a national basis. In some jurisdictions, the labeling requirement depends on the relative quantity of GMO in the product. A study that investigated voluntary labeling in South Africa found that 31% of products labeled as GMO-free had a GM content above 1.0%. 
In the European Union all food or feed that contains greater than 0.9% GMOs must be labelled. Testing on GMOs in food and feed is routinely done using molecular techniques such as PCR and bioinformatics. In a January 2010 paper, the extraction and detection of DNA along a complete industrial soybean oil processing chain was described to monitor the presence of Roundup Ready soybean, the amplification of soybean lectin gene by endpoint polymerase chain reaction was successfully achieved in all the steps of extraction and refining processes, until the fully refined soybean oil. The amplification of RR soybean by PCR assays using event-specific primers was also achieved for all the extraction and refining steps, except for the intermediate steps of refining possibly due to sample instability. The real-time PCR assays using specific probes confirmed all the results and proved that it is possible to detect and quantify genetically modified organisms in the fully refined soybean oil. To our knowledge, this has never been reported before and represents an important accomplishment regarding the traceability of genetically modified organisms in refined oils. According to Thomas Reddick, detection and prevention of cross-pollination is possible through the suggestions offered by the Farm Service Agency and Natural Resources Conservation Service. Suggestions include educating farmers on the importance of coexistence, providing farmers with tools and incentives to promote coexistence, conduct research to understand and monitor gene flow, provide assurance of quality and diversity in crops, provide compensation for actual economic losses for farmers. The genetically modified foods controversy consists of a set of disputes over the use of food made from genetically modified crops. The disputes involve consumers, farmers, biotechnology companies, governmental regulators, non-governmental organizations, environmental and political activists and scientists. The major disagreements include whether GM foods can be safely consumed, harm the environment and slash or are adequately tested and regulated. The objectivity of scientific research and publications has been challenged. Farming-related disputes include the use and impact of pesticides, seed production, and use, side effects on non-GMO crops slash farms and potential control of the GM food supply by seed companies. The conflicts have continued since GM foods were invented. They have occupied the media, the courts, local, regional and national governments and international organizations. The literature about biodiversity and the GE food slash feed consumption has sometimes resulted in animated debate regarding the suitability of the experimental designs, the choice of the statistical methods or the public accessibility of data. Such debate, even if positive and part of the natural process of review by the scientific community, has frequently been distorted by the media and often used politically and inappropriately in anti-GE crops campaigns. Domingo, Jose L., Bordenaba, Jordijan. A Literature Review on the Safety Assessment of Genetically Modified Plants. Environment International. 37, 734 42. Doi. 10.1016 J.Nvint.2011.01.003 PMID 21296423 In spite of this, the number of studies specifically focused on safety assessment of GM plants is still limited. However, it is important to remark that for the first time, a certain equilibrium in the number of research groups suggesting, on the basis of their studies, that a number of varieties of GM products are as safe and nutritious as the respective conventional non-GM plant, and those raising still serious concerns, 
was observed. Moreover, it is worth mentioning that most of the studies demonstrating that GM foods are as nutritional and safe as those obtained by conventional breeding, have been performed by biotechnology companies or associates, which are also responsible of commercializing these GM plants. Anyhow, this represents a notable advance in comparison with the lack of studies published in recent years in scientific journals by those companies. Krimsky, Sheldon An Illusory Consensus Behind GMO Health Assessment Science, Technology, and Human Values 40, 132 DOI 10.1177-01622439155983816 I began this article with the testimonials from respected scientists that there is literally no scientific controversy over the health effects of GMOs. My investigation into the scientific literature tells another story. In contrast, Panchen Alexander Y. Tuzhikov, Alexander I. Published GMO studies find no evidence of harm when corrected for multiple comparisons. Critical Reviews in Biotechnology 37, 15 doi, 10.3109-0738855.1.2015.1130684 ISSN 0738-8551 PMID 26767435 Here, we show that a number of articles some of which have strongly and negatively influenced the public opinion on GM crops and even provoked political actions, such as GMO embargo, share common flaws in the statistical evaluation of the data. Having accounted for these flaws, we conclude that the data presented in these articles does not provide any substantial evidence of GMO harm. The presented articles suggesting possible harm of GMOs received high public attention. However, despite their claims, they actually weaken the evidence for the harm and lack of substantial equivalency of studied GMOs. We emphasize that with over 1,783 published articles on GMOs over the last 10 years it is expected that some of them should have reported undesired differences between GMOs and conventional crops even if no such differences exist in reality. And Yang, Y.T., Chen, B. Governing GMOs in the USA Science, Law, and Public Health Journal of the Science of Food and Agriculture 96, 1851-55 doi, 10.1002-jsfa.7523 PMID 26536836 it is therefore not surprising that efforts to require labeling and to ban GMOs have been a growing political issue in the USA. Overall, a broad scientific consensus holds that currently marketed GM food poses no greater risk than conventional food. Major national and international science and medical associations have stated that no adverse human health effects related to GMO food have been reported or substantiated in peer-reviewed literature to date. Despite various concerns, today, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the World Health Organization, and many independent international science organizations agree that GMOs are just as safe as other foods. Compared with conventional breeding techniques, genetic engineering is far more precise and, in most cases, less likely to create an unexpected outcome. Pinholster, Ginger AAAS Board of Directors Legally mandating GM food labels could mislead and falsely alarm consumers. American Association for the Advancement of Science 
Retrieved February 8, 2016 Report 2 of the Council on Science and Public Health, Labeling of Bioengineered Foods American Medical Association 2012 Archived from the original on September 7, 2012 Retrieved March 19, 2016 Bioengineered foods have been consumed for close to 20 years, and during that time, no overt consequences on human health have been reported and slash or substantiated in the peer-reviewed literature. CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown. GM foods currently available on the international market have passed safety assessments and are not likely to present risks for human health. In addition, no effects on human health have been shown as a result of the consumption of such foods by the general population in the countries where they have been approved. Continuous application of safety assessments based on the Codex Alimentarius principles and, where appropriate, adequate post-market monitoring, should form the basis for ensuring the safety of GM foods. Genetically Modified Foods and Health, a Second Interim Statement British Medical Association March 2004 Retrieved March 21, 2016 In our view, the potential for GM foods to cause harmful health effects is very small and many of the concerns expressed apply with equal vigor to conventionally derived foods. However, safety concerns cannot, as yet, be dismissed completely on the basis of information currently available. When seeking to optimize the balance between benefits and risks, it is prudent to err on the side of caution and, above all, learn from accumulating knowledge and experience. Any new technology such as genetic modification must be examined for possible benefits and risks to human health and the environment. As with all novel foods, safety assessments in relation to GM foods must be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Proteins Members of the GM Jury Project were briefed on various aspects of genetic modification by a diverse group of acknowledged experts in the relevant subjects. The GM Jury reached the conclusion that the sale of GM foods currently available should be halted and the moratorium on commercial growth of GM crops should be continued. These conclusions were based on the precautionary principle and lack of evidence of any benefit. The jury expressed concern over the impact of GM crops on farming, the environment, food safety, and other potential health effects. The Royal Society Review concluded that the risks to human health associated with the use of specific viral DNA sequences in GM plants are negligible, and while calling for caution in the introduction of potential allergens into food crops, stressed the absence of evidence that commercially available GM foods cause clinical allergic manifestations. The BMA shares the view that that there is no robust evidence to prove that GM foods are unsafe but we endorse the call for further research and surveillance to provide convincing evidence of safety and benefit. The literature about biodiversity and the GE food slash feed consumption has sometimes resulted in animated debate regarding the suitability of the experimental designs, the choice of the statistical methods or the public accessibility of data. Such debate, even if positive and part of the natural process of review by the scientific community, has frequently been distorted by the media and often used politically and inappropriately in anti-GE crops campaigns. Domingo, Jose L., Bordenaba, Jordijan A Literature Review on the Safety Assessment of Genetically Modified Plants Environment International 37, 734-42 DOI 
10.1016-j.nvint.2011.01.003 PMID 2129623 In spite of this, the number of studies specifically focused on safety assessment of GM plants is still limited. However, it is important to remark that for the first time, a certain equilibrium in the number of research groups suggesting, on the basis of their studies, that a number of varieties of GM products are as safe and nutritious as the respective conventional non-GM plant, and those raising still serious concerns, was observed. Moreover, it is worth mentioning that most of the studies demonstrating that GM foods are as nutritional and safe as those obtained by conventional breeding, have been performed by biotechnology companies or associates, which are also responsible of commercializing these GM plants. Anyhow, this represents a notable advance in comparison with the lack of studies published in recent years in scientific journals by those companies. Krimsky, Sheldon An Illusory Consensus Behind GMO Health Assessment Science, Technology, and Human Values 40, 132 doi 10.1177-01622439155983813 I began this article with the testimonials from respected scientists that there is literally no scientific controversy over the health effects of GMOs. My investigation into the scientific literature tells another story. Livestock and Contrast Panchin, Alexander Y., Tuzhikov, Alexander I. Published GMO studies find no evidence of harm when corrected for multiple comparisons. Critical Reviews in Biotechnology 37, 15 DOI 10.3109-0738855.1.2015.1130684 ISSN 0738-8551 PMID 26767435 Here, we show that a number of articles some of which have strongly and negatively influenced the public opinion on GM crops and even provoked political actions, such as GMO embargo, share common flaws in the statistical evaluation of the data. Having accounted for these flaws, we conclude that the data presented in these articles does not provide any substantial evidence of GMO harm. Salmon The presented articles suggesting possible harm of GMOs received high public attention. However, despite their claims, they actually weaken the evidence for the harm and lack of substantial equivalency of studied GMOs. We emphasize that with over 1,783 published articles on GMOs over the last 10 years it is expected that some of them should have reported undesired differences between GMOs and conventional crops even if no such differences exist in reality. And Health and Safety Testing Yang, Y.T. Chen, B. Governing GMOs in the USA, Science, Law, and Public Health Journal of the Science of Food and Agriculture 96, 1851-55 doi, 10.1002-jsfa.7523 PMID 26536836 it is therefore not surprising that efforts to require labeling and to ban GMOs have been a growing political issue in the USA. Overall, a broad scientific consensus holds that currently marketed GM food poses no greater risk than conventional food. 
Major national and international science and medical associations have stated that no adverse human health effects related to GMO food have been reported or substantiated in peer-reviewed literature to date. Despite various concerns, today, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the World Health Organization, and many independent international science organizations agree that GMOs are just as safe as other foods. Compared with conventional breeding techniques, genetic engineering is far more precise and, in most cases, less likely to create an unexpected outcome. Regulation United States Regulations Labeling Detection Controversies Pinholster, Ginger AAAS Board of Directors, legally mandating GM food labels could mislead and falsely alarm consumers. American Association for the Advancement of Science Retrieved February 8, 2016 Report 2 of the Council on Science and Public Health Labeling of Bioengineered Foods American Medical Association 2012 Archived from the original on September 7, 2012 Retrieved March 19, 2016 Bioengineered foods have been consumed for close to 20 years, and during that time, no overt consequences on human health have been reported and slash or substantiated in the peer-reviewed literature. CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown. Genetically modified foods and health, a second interim statement. British Medical Association. March 2004. Retrieved March 21. 2016. In our view, the potential for GM foods to cause harmful health effects is very small and many of the concerns expressed apply with equal vigor to conventionally derived foods. However, safety concerns cannot, as yet, be dismissed completely on the basis of information currently available. When seeking to optimize the balance between benefits and risks, it is prudent to err on the side of caution and, above all, learn from accumulating knowledge and experience. Any new technology such as genetic modification must be examined for possible benefits and risks to human health and the environment. As with all novel foods, Safety assessments in relation to GM foods must be made on a case-by-case -case basis. Members of the GM jury project were briefed on various aspects of genetic modification by a diverse group of acknowledged experts in the relevant subjects. The GM jury reached the conclusion that the sale of GM foods currently available should be halted and the moratorium on commercial growth of GM crops should be continued. These conclusions were based on the precautionary principle and lack of evidence of any benefit. The jury expressed concern over the impact of GM crops on farming, the environment, food safety, and other potential health effects. The Royal Society Review concluded that the risks to human health associated with the use of specific viral DNA sequences in GM plants are negligible and while calling for caution in the introduction of potential allergens into food crops, stressed the absence of evidence that commercially available GM foods cause clinical allergic manifestations. The BMA shares the view that that there is no robust evidence to prove that GM foods are unsafe but we endorse the call for further research and surveillance to provide convincing evidence of safety and benefit.